Well, hi there. It's us. We're back. Can't get rid of us. It's like every Wednesday we just show up on your screen, on your device, or whatever, you know, whatever the kids call it these days. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I hope you're having an awesome week. <sighs> My week is pretty. It's a cold one. Yeah, you know, we're halfway there. Yeah. It's been challenging for me. It's been challenging, but I'm still standing. Can't keep a good man down, right? So uh, welcome to the Shower Door Professionals live stream. Wednesday evening here with the Shower Door Pros. We are loaded. For bear i mean we're going to talk about shower doors we're going to talk about shower door industry we might share some tips and tricks might give you some insider info who knows valuable stuff will be discussed that's what i, what I know for sure so sure. welcome aboard if you are in the facebook page just watching from over there you can do that or you can just click on the link Come on in to Zoom, be on the call. You can ask questions, give your opinion. We've got a lot of opinions. So you can just throw yours on the pile if you'd like. Hey, I just wanted to uh, give Christina a chance to just pop in. I, I see her. She's in the shadows lurking. I think she's driving or something. What's going on, Christina? Hey, Chris. Yeah, I am driving. Um, sorry about that. Oh, but, that's great. Uh, I, Thanks for joining <laughs> us. It's cool. Of course. Um, I have a quick co-op update for you all. Uh, we've been meeting every Tuesday morning. If you're not aware or if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can find a lot of information on showerdoorprofessionals.com, courtesy of Mr. Rob Gomez. Um, we have not finished the bylaws yet. However, we are plugging and chugging away at those. We have met with a cooperative CPA and a cooperative attorney who have advised us um, to continue working towards our bylaws. We're going to get 70-ish percent of the way there, and then we're going to meet with an attorney to formalize and uh, turn our bylaws into legalese, if you will. Um, I have all of those notes for everybody, anybody who wants them. And if anybody would like to see parts of the bylaws or if anyone has any questions about what any of this means, we are here to answer them. Um, I haven't been posting notes in the Facebook group just because I forgot, but I can certainly do that. This is all open source and open communication. Um, and yeah, I think we're just trying to hammer down how to verify businesses and that's been a really big conversation big topic uh there are a lot of us talking about it and i think we have a really good grasp of what all of this will entail so if anyone has questions let me know shout it out shoot me a message email me um whatever you need to do and uh but we're plugging away and i'll have an update every week or somebody from our little steering committee will have an update every week so we'll uh kick it back to chris did i miss anything no that's excellent great job yeah so you can just go check out the new website showerdoorprofessionals.com it's pretty cool rob's been working on that it looks awesome um and you know more and more is going to be added to that as we go along uh it's going to more functionality is going to be added to that but right now, that's the place to go just to get on board, you know, just to join join the group and, and show your interest in the co-op. And who knows? Maybe before too long, I think probably pretty safe to say before the end of the year, I think we'll probably have something going live where you can get leads, you know, from around the country. And uh, it's going to be awesome. I'm totally excited to be just a small part of this, this cool thing that's happening, you know, um, 
Now, I was just listening to somebody talk today uh, about, um, you know, starting groups. You know, groups tend to um, organize. And if you just get together and, and, and hang out with some friends, let's say, and you do it on a regular basis, it's just a natural thing for people to, uh, to start going in some direction. And in fact, if you don't pick a direction, what happens is the group just ends up dissolving and disbanding. But if you catch a vision and people start to get on the same page and want to start doing something, um, that's what makes a group thrive. And it's cool. It's just kind of an organic, um, organically happened that we just decided, hey, let's uh, let's mm -hmm. form something. Let's form some kind of an official cooperative. And uh, it's happening. We're we're like talking into talking to each other, talking to other outside professionals who know stuff about the law and you know stuff that we know and uh it's pretty cool anyway hey chris yes Brad, uh, you happening? know one other thing and i don't know if we've mentioned this to everybody in the group but as we are doing these bylaws and we're discussing it and having conversations and all that it seems like more and more comes up that are benefits. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we talked about benefits in this last right. meeting, I think. And I don't, uh, you know, I don't have that up on my screen right now. But, you know, there's a lot more than this marketing thing and just getting leads. There, you know, could be an opportunity for a lot of us to uh, maybe, um, well, I mean, there could be like a dental insurance benefit that we could all get into. Sure, or, why not? Or maybe some kind of a uh, human resource benefit or something we could all tap into or whatever. There could be a lot of resources within this co-op that makes it an advantage for you. Um, might reduce costs in other ways. Mm -hmm. um, so... I just wanted to mention that so people realize that it's getting pretty, pretty good. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. Cause the more we talk about it, the more we think of other ways that we can work together and, and can benefit from it. You know, there may be people out there who are like just so busy, have so much work. They really don't want any more work. Or maybe you're like <laughs> me and you're like trying to figure out how you're going to get out of it. <clears throat> Yeah. It's like, yeah, you know, right. I mean, going into business in the in the glass industry is like taking a tiger by the tail. I mean, it's like, you know, Brad Jurd will tell you, you know, um, sometimes, you know, it's like, is it safer to hold on or let go? You know, as soon as I let go, this tiger's going to turn on me. So um, but I mean, even if you're that guy, and there's opportunity to give back. You know, there's opportunity to kind of reinvest in the industry and um, kind of depart some of the wisdom, impart, depart. Uh, say I've got departing on me, Mark. Impart, you know, some of your wisdom, um, you know, to some some of the younger guys that are coming up in the industry. Uh, maybe, I mean, maybe we could pool resources to buy hardware, you know, uh, at a discounted rate. Maybe we could, like Brian with, or Brad was saying about, um, you know, maybe purchase insurance or, uh, I mean, there, there's a lot of different things. And just, you know, the prestige that goes along with being one of the shower door professionals. Oh, you tell the customer, you know, we're part, that if, if you're part of the co-op, you can tell the customer, you know, this is a, it's a big deal, you know, and this co-op uh, has standards that uh, everybody has to abide by and, um, it could be a real good selling point to bring up to a customer. Sure. That sets you apart from your competition. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I, I was thinking... really... Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Well, uh, we also talked about last week in our meeting, one of the benefits could be having something like um, a filterable gallery that we all contribute photos of our showers to. And this is still a, a thought in progress. It hasn't been fully fleshed out, but my dad and I have that on our website with our photos, but we would love more photos and there's plenty of glass stuff that 
we don't have or don't do. And, you know, homeowners would love that. And I think a lot of posts on our professionals page now are people asking, hey, can someone send me a, you know, a door panel with a notch, a glass to glass, you know, matte black, but square style with a ladder pole, you know, yeah, we can do that. By all of our powers and photos combined, I am sure one of us has exactly that configuration. So yeah. um, that would be a really cool resource as well. Yeah. So excited about yeah. that po uh, possibility. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and you know, I was actually kind of thinking about that, that topic before the, the call started tonight of, you know, just if anybody has any other ideas um, for, you know, things that we haven't thought of already that, that we could do to make it, to make the co-op more valuable to, to our members. Well, if uh, anybody does, I mean, they, just let us know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I um I don't have a segue for this or okay. and I don't, I don't know if you have a topic of conversation for yeah, tonight no. but I have a question. Great. Okay, um I think we've talked about this before but it's maybe been a little while and um I have a designer who <laughs> she has a lot of high-end customers and she wants to give us the business. I have a good relationship with her. But she wants a kickback. She wants a commission check to be cut back to her mm -hmm. um, after the job. Yep. And I <sighs> feel dirty about it. I don't think that's great accounting. <laughs> um, but I just, I was wondering, how do other people feel about that? How do you manage that? Because I get the sense that she said all of her other subs do it. It's never been a problem. Um, she's confused as to why it's a problem for us. And I feel you know, like I'm kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. So what do you guys think? <laughs> well, I mean, I've done it. I've... <laughs> Nobody chirp, wants chirp, to touch chirp. it, huh? <laughs> you know, I've Miller. done it. I've done it in the past. You know, I did it like when um, when I was like early on um, and I was just kind of looking for leads and willing to pay for leads. Uh, and I, I actually suggested it. And I didn't think that there was anything really untoward about it. Uh, I mean, I was giving people like a 10 percent. Um, Kind of a finder's fee is what I call that. Ten percent. Ten percent. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a mm. lot. Actually, five percent is more like standard. Um, but yeah, I was you know I was hungry. You know, I was needing I was needing some leads. I was new. I hadn't really developed that much of a, of a reputation. I hadn't been out in the industry on my own for very long. And it was worth it. It was worth it to me for a while. Mm. Uh, but uh, just for a short while, it wasn't long before it was like, oh, it was no longer worth it for me to, uh, to pay that. Chris, I think you made a good point um, saying, comparing that to paying for leads, because that, that could be how you could justify it, right? Um, depending on how much they're asking, obviously, but you could put that in the category of your lead, lead generation, because um, you do pay for leads, you know, advertising. So I think that's a good point saying that is a paid lead, maybe. I mean, yeah. obviously depending on how much, you know, if it's out, you know, off the roof amount that they, they want, then that's not acceptable, but something I guess to the lead yeah I mean yeah, she's asking for five percent 
five percent. Yeah, I mean, and it's really, it's really not that hard to tack on five percent. Is, is the is the five percent that she's asking? Is it, is it just related to the fact, or is it just related to the fact that she's coming to you with the job, or is she, is she quote unquote earning that five percent kickback? Is is she handling all the communication and with the client regarding hardware choices? Is she coming with brochures and glass samples and showing and explaining and fielding all the questions? <laughs> That's something that I struggle with um, related to the same topic. Yeah. I've had contractors that just want they just want money because they passed along my phone number. Um, and I don't feel like some of them earn it. You know, if if you want if you want money for passing along my phone number, you need to do more than just pass it along, because I know this customer could just type in on online, you know, frameless shower doors near me. And I know that my name is coming up at the top of the list. So for that, I don't really need you. You didn't really do much for me. And you're putting me in contact with the homeowner, the client, and they're now coming to me with questions regarding design and, and hardware. And do you have this finish available? And can I get this style handle and so on and so forth. And now all the legwork that I feel the contractor designer should have done to earn this kickback, uh, I've gone and done. So if I'm paying just to pass along a phone number, um, you can kind of keep it. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll just let them find me the way everybody else does, you know, that being said, though, if it's somebody that, you know, throws a ton of work my way, I'm willing to consider it. Uh, but again, that's in a sense, earning it, you're earning it with a sense of loyalty in regards to you're constantly, you know, you're doing 20, 30 bathroom remodels a year <laughs> and you're, you're constantly saying call freedom glass and mirror. They do a great job. You know, that's different too. You're earning it in that sense. So I don't know. I I, I struggle with this from time to time. It's mm -hmm. a fine line. Um I don't know. I, I, I'm interested to hear what other people have to say too. And I got my pen ready. So uh I I think I had a little input on that one. I don't know what you guys think, but I have we do a lot of work for uh, general contractors restoration companies and uh, typically the way we work with them is when they refer a client um, we actually build through their account which is like a discount account and so they already have a set percentage set for their account so say for example if we do a, a thousand six hundred dollar shower that we would normally do for the public and we charge them a thousand four hundred they would get the difference for that so that way they keep recommending clients our way and then they make money we make money so you give them a discounted price and then allow them to kind of tack on whatever they choose. Well, what they choose, or, I mean, we give them a recommendation for the most part, but it is at the end of the day, what they choose. Cause you know, the profits allow it, you know, so they bring enough volume to where it's worth, you know, worth us doing that because they're, they're generating money for us. They're making money. And then at the same time, obviously the client's still paying the same price. So there's not there, you know, no one's really losing in that situation. Uh -huh. That's usually what we do, <clears throat> and that's I tried to do that with her, but and Brian also to your point. I mean, it's it has not been worth it yet. I can tell you that um, she brings us really high end clients, and she tries to sell them glass specifically from us, even if they get other quotes. But as soon as we mark it up for her finders fee i mean we're priced out of the market and so we're not uh -huh. going to get the bid anyway you know and that's i struggle with that a lot too it's like yeah. we can't be competitive and we're just going to lose the business and she monopolizes my time in oh. all of her designs so that's my struggle with this particular person but i'd like to hear more how other people <clears throat> handle it My biggest concern is keeping track of all of that. If you've got half a dozen people giving you leads and then you forget 
you know, uh, you you won't get them paid, or the, the next thing you know, they call, they're a little pissed off because they might feel like you're you're avoiding paying them, and uh, there needs to be a system in place that makes it easy to manage. Um, I guess you could do a spreadsheet. It's just, it's frustrating to me because it's just one more complication. Mm. Our business is complicated as it is. All the paper paperwork and red tape that you deal with all the time yeah. and all the follow-ups you've got to do for your customers and collections and everything that's mm -hmm. involved. Now you're adding one more component to your business. So I don't know. That's just my concern. So I had I had this come up with a contractor that I've been doing business with for for a while now, pretty recently, and you know he's talking about money back and whatever else. I I don't like doing it, and it's not because I it has nothing to do with the money. It's just I try to. So the conversation I had to him with him was, I feel like we bring you value in a different way than one hundred and fifty dollars or two hundred bucks, because oh. he has access to me directly. So when he's standing in the customer's bathroom and it's gutted down to the studs, he FaceTimes me and he goes, Mike, this is what we're thinking. The customer's there, the client's standing there, he's standing there. I'm, you know, just, you know, my face is there and I'm talking to him. And I explained to him, you know, obviously not during a client call, but I said, having access to me during the the whole like development and the and the planning stages of the bathroom. And having that consultation and having the client there and being able to make all those decisions is, is to me, is worth more than a hundred dollars. You know, I can put renderings together on the spot farm. I, I do all kinds of stuff for him that I don't think he's going to get from anywhere else. So, I mean, if he's not seeing the value in that and he just wants to compare it to money, I, you know, that's unfortunate, but um, I mean, I, I would let it go. I, I don't, I don't really care about the money that much. And it's, it's more about the, the experience and the, and the value brought in so many different ways and just the access yes. just the access the access to a professional with all the experience in the computer and the rendering and the pitches and all and all that stuff and being able to call me at any given time at any given day while you're standing there with a the client is to me worth way more than than any amount of money i could give him oh. i was just going to ask if that was a, a scheduled appointment oh. or if he just simply calls and you're available that's that's different that's special that's not no, mm -hmm. I I agree, and like I said, he's he's one of a handful that I've been doing business with for a long time. Um, so that's why he has, you know, my direct contact information. But no, that's normally it would be yeah, normally it would be a scheduled call or whatever. But um, with, with with this handful of you know, they have my cell phone number. They'll call me and they'll all they'll text me and say you know you got a couple minutes, and it's it's rare that I say no. So I mean. I don't know. There's there's different there's different ways to put value on things, and having access to professionals is worth far more than hundred bucks. You know, is he so, able to get that with any other contractor in town? I I couldn't. <laughs> like I don't know. Like, I I doubt it. I mean, I know I know all the shower That's door and glass companies in the area, and I I don't think I'd be able to get them on the phone. So I you know I right. I doubt it. Mm -hmm. Hey Brad. So I don't know. We'll see where it goes. I, hopefully, I don't lose him as a client, as a customer. But I, I have a feeling if I did, he would come back like after a couple of bad experiences. I think that's a very good point, and I agree with you, especially in that situation. Um, I guess you know it's just one of those things we'll have to deal with on a case by case basis. But usually, and I know Bill Dobbins position is similar to mine here in that I would rather trade leads with other people out there and say, hey, uh, I, I would give leads to tile guys all the time. It's like candy, you know, and um, I, all I ask is that they give my name out all the time um, and we'll just trade that way because, you know, if they if they expect me to put something on for them, then what if I ask them to put stuff on for me? You know, now I've got to remember, you know, I gave them a lead and I'm expecting X number of dollars. It's just, it's a management nightmare. 
Well, it's true. It's hard to keep track of. Yeah. If you start to scale your business, it's the amount of headaches that come out of it. Brad, your intuition's right and Michael's right. But when you start to scale the business, you get designers, the people that are holding your relationship over their head based on a $150 commission check are the ones they're going to be calling before the job's even done. You haven't even got paid yet. And you get all these unnecessary phone. Where's my commission check? Where's my commission check? And to me, like Michael said, if they don't see the value, especially in today's market, like all of us have problems finding people to work for us because the skilled trade labor market is like shrinking because there's so many other options for younger people to do, which means we're more of an important commodity more than ever. Like our builders, our best builders and customers and designers recognize the value of being able to call Michael, call Keith on FaceTime and go, hey, can, can you, here's our customer. Can we put studs here? They understand the importance of that far more than this little check that could come in. And, and then the accounting nightmare. My mother, before we had enough money to pay to have other people do things, she would have a shift in about this. I'm cutting a commission check to someone we haven't even got paid for the customer. Or is that woman going to answer the phone call when it leaks? And it was like, it got to get out of control. And, and then we said, why are we discounting? We're, we're putting our name on this brand to be put out to the market to stand for something. And we wouldn't compromise our principles. We wouldn't compromise our morals. Why the hell are we compromising our price? Mm. We're not going to give them any less value. I'm still going to answer the FaceTime when they need me. And so we just stopped doing it. Um, yeah. Now, we do do referrals. Like Brad was saying, like we swap leads. I don't even have expectations of them giving my name out because I understand human dynamics that are almost unavoidable. If I give Brian Jared a lead and he's in my area for plumbing, I give him a lead that puts 10 grand in his pocket. You can damn sure well know that he wants to keep that relationship going and the reciprocity kicks in where the next time there's an opportunity, he's going to want to give and pay it back. But trading off money is like a slow death spiral because, oh, I did your house. Now I need some granite work. And that was 2000 years was 3000 This horse trading. It just, when you start to scale a business, it just convolutes the waters. I would advocate not to do it. If you don't compromise your principles and morals, you shouldn't be compromising your price because yeah. you're not going to be giving any less service and you're just causing more headaches, unnecessary phone calls, accounting, yada, yada, yada. Your, your gut is already telling you, Brad, I can hear it in your voice. The difference is, are you going to listen to it? <laughs> no, I am. It's, now, I might make a one-off decision. This particular customer that Christina is talking about there is so much extra money in the job. I mean, there's a lot of money in this job. But she said she's trading her time for money. And she well, said she's she hijacking. Is, that's a good point. That's a really good point. <laughs> it's the 80-20 rule. You know, the 20% of the customers are bringing yeah. most of the profit. And if this woman's sucking up all the time, I mean, some of the best decisions. Last year, Jay and I fired in 20 years of business. Last year, we fired four builders. We've never fired a builder in 19 years of business while firing four builders that have been giving us work for a decade. We actually did, you know, 15% more business because it freed up time. And even more importantly, it freed up time with people that gave a shit about us. So the relationships were even stronger. And when the relationships even stronger, the price becomes less relevant because they see the value in being able to communicate with you when they need you. Like I hear that all the time. I love working with you guys. Cause when I call you, one of you is going to be there. You know, that's, those are the type of people you want to do business with. Yep. <clears throat> Especially now it's hard to find people that give a shit. Yeah. I mean, everybody on this call is on, you know, it's, you know, it's a work night. We're all in here talking to get better. We're the ones that give a shit. And why are we giving our, <laughs> we shouldn't be giving our money away no way yeah. 
<clears throat> lot of experience there. Thanks. Well, I, I concur. Yeah, yeah you know, too. my my experience was like, it seems like I did I did do that early on as I as I was saying, you know, starting out. And there's a lot of ways to rationalize that. I mean, you could think of it like, well, instead of advertising, I was giving my advertising money like directly to to customers or to somebody who was referring me. But the downside is that there was a recovery process. And I don't know if you can identify with this, Keith, that like you had to kind of recover from having done that. You had to recover your your reputation in a sense kind of takes a hit from doing that because then i remember getting getting a call and someone saying hey so and so said that you you're the chief you have the cheapest price in like my first like couple of years and oh man that was like it was like a kick in the gut i've got a reputation for being the lowest price Man, that's well, nobody. Wanted. Nobody can fault anybody for doing anything when you're new, <laughs> because you literally you're new, so you're going course, to make mistakes. Right, you're going right. to make mistakes. We learned it the hard way. Believe me, we gave away <laughs> thousands, and at the expense of our mother, we can scream. And believe me, we learned. Oh, we learned. And just like feeding the alligators, once you start, I, I understand. <laughs> believe me. You would do just about anything in the beginning to get a sale, especially Doug and I were competing. Like I would have done things that I would never think about doing now, believe me. Um, but if I had to do it over again, based on what I learned and the precedent that you set, because I didn't really appreciate the true value that we were bringing at the time. We were just hungry. But if you're playing the long tail approach, um, you're setting a dangerous precedent. And like you said, you're taking all the risk. You're putting all your reputation on it. Like you, if the the value of you keeping your word isn't enough to cover the potential commission check, how strong is the relationship? Especially in a world where people don't so much keep their word as much as they should. And so I I would elect to not do business with that individual if they don't see the value in that. And I'd have a conversation with them. I would sit them down, Mr. and Mrs. Designer. We love working for you. You bring us nothing but high-end customers. The coolest jobs we do are with you. However, the, the time that you and your high-end customers deserve is consuming. And in a market where there's not as many people doing the craftsmanship that we are, there's a, there's a high demand for us. And we want to continue to give you the service that you've come to expect. However, in this very demanding market, we just can't afford to be. And she might say something like, oh, I completely understand. As long as you guys will still take care of my customers, that's all I need. She's never not going to come to you and say, I don't need that commission check anymore if she's not tested. But if you approach it in an empathetic manner, that's you're not lying. I mean, do you want to trade your time for money? And if she's not willing to at least listen to that dialogue, then I think she's told you enough about the relationship and it's one-sided. Hmm. And I, yeah, Christina could deliver that conversation to her. I know it. <laughs> Thanks for that, Keith. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. I just need to get through these, like the jobs that we already have in queue with her. But yeah, I mean, she texted me at midnight last night and then called me first thing this morning. Did you see my text? It's like, <laughs> yeah, I did. But like, I love I those customers. Sleeping. I love those customers. <laughs> but you have to explain to her having my access. I want to continue to give. I can't do the commissions anymore. We're, we just can't do that. And you can call me anytime. Yeah. Yeah. And she's also <laughs> like as fun and as high end ideas as she has. She wants to do um it, it maybe this is just my limited knowledge but she wants to um, inset channel on the top and bottom like floor to ceiling panel um set the channel into the tile but it maybe i'm an idiot maybe i don't understand this but the panel would have to be taller than the opening to catch the top channel on the bottom channel would it not 
And then how do you get it in that opening? It's a lift and drop. So it's yeah. a lift and drop, Christina. Right. Yeah. It's a lift and drop. Yeah. But we're talking about 60 by 120 piece of glass. And it's like, I just, I'm like, can we not just do, I don't know. Can we not just do our normal stuff? And she just like fights me on every single thing. And now she wants, today she also had the audacity to, show me another company's quote and say, why is your price higher than theirs? Well, because your commission's on it, lady. Like, I don't even know the thing. I'm aggravated already. Yeah, I want to call her. You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> Give us all her money. We're all, all, all going to call her. And all, and all, and all, she ever, has she ever given you a Google review? No, but that's a good point, too. I'm about to ask her for one. Oh, yeah, I don't know like, if I would because we might have to fire her. <laughs> it just sounds like a high maintenance relationship, and then now you want me to do it for less money. So high maintenance, and I feel so stupid. I just feel like such oh, a naive man. idiot. No, nah. because she's go. using That's the awesome. whole like no. we're both young women in the industry, and I know it's like she manipulated me. She really did, and I freaking fell for it, and I'm mad. Now I'm mad. Darn it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> not this is a good not for making me bad, for showing me the light. It's a good lesson. It is. And you've got to experiment. Everybody's learned this lesson. And I've yeah. done it a dozen times, if not more, believe me. <laughs> I keep learning the well, same lesson over and over. <laughs> Well, it's like when people gamble, they they lose a little bit and they're like, oh, if I just go a little bit more, then it'll get better. If I go a little bit more, it'll get better. And then you just go down the road and now you're so far in and you finally see the light like I'm lost. You know, so that's just kind of what I would compare it to. Sounds like the voice of experience right there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I need to have a conversation with her and let her know. Um, that's that's all true. But it this would has be her loss. I, for not for losing access to you and all the experience and the time and it would honestly be a bigger loss for her as far as i see it oh thanks <laughs> all right well that is a great topic uh conversation actually i mean that's uh it's really tempting it's really tempting to to take that that bait you know and it's I don't know if it's always a bad thing. I mean, but I think it's probably almost always a bad thing. <laughs> well, we have to like right. we have to value ourselves in our time without letting our egos get the best of us. So there's this very fine line that you walk where it's like, hey, I'm valuable, but you don't want to be an ass about it. You know what I mean? So you, you always walk in this line where it's like, where am I? I need to remain fair and not an egomaniac and make sure that I'm valuing myself mm -hmm. to that point. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's definitely a, a fine line. Yeah. Uh, well, and the other, I mean, we are a really good glass company where mm -hmm. I think obviously biased, but I think we're the best glass company in our area. We are so awesome. However, uh, there's a lot of glass companies in our area and that, I also just want to go above and beyond everybody else in every possible way. And that's, that's where I'm, I'm trying to find that line and getting bitten a little bit on these things because I am trying to go above and beyond and I am trying to push boundaries and, and do things that, that I, big mirrors that I know can be dangerous, things like that. I, I, this same designer on another house wants a really big mirror. And she said, well, this other glass company did it. You know, they quoted it. Well, then use them, you know? And I did tell her that on that one. I said, that's reckless. That's absolutely reckless. But, you oh, know. Hey. How big a mirror? This one is, well, you guys might laugh. I don't know. This is 72 by 120. I'm not laughing. That's big. Yeah, I'm not laughing. That's big. Maybe some people do stuff like that, but I that keeps me up at night. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Mirrors are like so. the most like treacherous of all glass. 
quarter inch mirror is the most treacherous piece of glass there is. I mean, you can't see through it. When they oh. break, they break so like, oh, my daggers, man. Everybody I ever knew who got hurt really bad, hot really bad, was on a mirror. Yeah, oh. yeah I, I hate them. I don't, I try not to. Yeah, it's the thing of my it. nightmares. Yeah. Everybody has a, has a, an appetite uh, for certain things. Your appetite is not a 72 100 or 120 mirror. That's okay. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have your limit and other companies have their limits. Uh, or maybe they don't have their limits. But having your limits uh, is a good thing because it keeps you uh, in the parameters that you want to stay in. And uh, that defines you as a company. I wouldn't feel bad about uh, having those limits at all. I think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. If you're going to push those limits, though, it won't be with a customer that you don't respect. You can't possibly do the best job if you feel like you're being taken advantage of at any point. And it's just eventually going to be a death spiral. I've had this one thing I realized when I was discounting in the beginning before I could, if I knew any better, what I realized is if I, if they beat me up or manipulated me early on, I knew it in my intuition. I just didn't know how to combat it. So I just went along with it, right? Figuring this will get better. But what I realized was during the installation or during times when I should have been communicating as far as installation or whatever, it wasn't such a high priority because I feel like internally, I'm like, I can't believe I have to go out of my way to give this best service, this customer who manipulated me on the front end. And by the way, I agree to it. It was my own fault, <laughs> but I didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. But there, and, and Christina, just to prove this, I'm, I'm speaking next week at Glass Expo and I can't believe we're talking about this. There's a guy who won a Nobel Prize in 2002. His name is Daniel Kahneman. And he won a Nobel Prize on what's called prospect theory and loss aversion. And they studied the dynamics of a human being's decision around economics. But more importantly, what happens when you feel like you've been taken advantage of or stolen from? And you can never feel better about that situation until you get even. And what does that mean? Not calling back or you know, having anxiety about them. And it, it won't allow you to perform at your highest level. And so if you don't have a conversation with her, it's just it's not a question of if when you stop doing business, it's just when. It'll happen. It's just a question, what is your tolerance level putting up with this mm. subpar relationship? It'll happen. It's just a question of when. Now, she could have an epiphany if you sit her down and explain the dynamics of how this is affecting. She might go, oh, it's not a big deal. I can make it on the furniture. I take their head off on the couches anyway. You know, who knows what she's going to say, but what's happening is she's holding you hostage from pushing those limits, especially like Jay and I, we deal with this now. So we don't have a ton of installers. So these things get bigger and bigger every year. And same with me. It like, it worries me to death. But I've also noticed we're more willing to work together and overcome these bigger obstacles when the whole situation was good. Like all the money's in place, everybody's going to be taken care of. We can have all the necessary tools and components to be safe. It, I don't have that looming cloud over me that I got taken advantage of while I'm taking all this risk. Start second guessing everything. And that's usually when the problems happen. And then oh, you know what? There's a little chip there. I can sand it and cover it with or I chip the tile. And you start justifying in your brain, I don't need to tell them about that because they took advantage. You know, that goes back to the prospect theory of a human being is not going to feel better about this situation until they get even. And what you think is even is usually more. And then it, it's just this never ending spiral. Yeah, absolutely. You'll you'll see. I mean, I can already hear it between what you guys are saying and what I'm saying. I think you already know the answer to this. So and you're so right, too, about those are always the jobs where things go wrong, too. And there's something about, you know, you really, you really put your finger on it, Keith, about there's something that happens in your psyche that, like, 
you know, you know that you're not getting what you deserve. And it's, it's so hard, almost impossible to give the kind of service that you want to give, you know, so it's kind of like a double, double, Chris, whammy, you know, people will die to preserve their autonomy. And when you know you got taken advantage of on the front end of a sale, and then you know, oh, wait, I got to go sweep up those extra little metal chips, even though they talked down to me, they took money from me, they're not doing Google reviews. Fuck, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing it. And we go through that exercise because yeah. it's like a human behavior that's unavoidable. It's just yeah. unavoidable. Yeah. And then you feel bad for it, for yeah. feeling that way. Even though really you're, you're pretty justified feeling that way on one hand, but on the yeah. other hand, it's just not you because yeah. you're where you are because you love what you do and you want to be the best you can. You want to give better service. Kind of like Christina is saying, it's like, you know, I mean, I could echo everything she said, she was saying, you know, it's like, yeah, we're the best. We're the best in our area. There's a whole bunch of questions, but none are as good as us, you know, and like, it's because we care, you know, I mean, it's the love, you know, it's the love that we add to the product that makes us the best. And, and when I feel like I'm selling myself short, I have trouble bringing the love. And then when I can't bring the love, I feel bad because it's like, I'm not delivering what I know I can. Yeah, it's like a downward spiral, man. Crazy. Yeah, it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. You guys, um, unless you have more to add to that, kind of we were talking about dangerous mirrors and how bad those can be. And at the glass show, there was a company that had what's called a sinkhole saver. Does anybody know what that is? What saver? It's a sinkhole saver. Now, what this is, it's a suction cup on an expanding rod. It has four suction cups. I don't know. They might even have some with more. But what this does for your mirror, and we just, we, we my guys say they love it, but they, they um, you know, suck the suction cups down on the glass on this bar, it keeps the mirror from flexing. Oh. Mm. So That's if you cool. have these long mirrors, you got that bar and they can control it with the bar. Maybe you can put it in the chat later. That sounds cool. That's yeah. what I worry about these things is the flex. That's what always uh -huh. freaks me out. Yeah. I don't know if you can see this. Oh yeah. Kind of. Yeah. It's from Omni Cubed and it's usually used for granite and marble but yeah. we we saw it at the glass show we liked it so much we thought we'd get it we've used it twice and it really helped like that. and how big how big is that bar what's the length i of can't that? remember it expands probably i don't know shoot i don't know well the, it would can, have can to you be see adjusted. the picture by the way a or little bit yeah. Yeah. yeah and it comes Posted with the, the suction cups yes and they're manual suction cups, the same as like a regular Woods cup? Uh, they have, um, yes, that's an option. You can also, as an option, they have a, a vacuum pump. The vacuum pump. Yeah. Huh. That is a pretty good idea. Back back in the day, man, when I worked with my grandfather, we used to use those orange clamps and a two by four across the top of the mirror and just yeah. that kind of. Huh. <laughs> A little there bit of more ghetto, but that's, that's yeah, pretty advanced. for rigidity. Yeah, sure. I like it. Huh. Yeah, this oh. thing's cool. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So in you our know, showroom, uh, one of my trade partners, huh. uh, I had put slabs of porcelain on two shower displays, and that's how they installed it, right there. That's how I discovered it. Huh. So I made a note of checking that out at the glass show because I figured they had to be there. Nice. Um, so, is that yeah. why you were walking so fast into the show? That was the best video. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's funny. That was that's great. Funny. That yeah, was awesome. Christina, uh, video. That was video. great. I mean, I watched it like a hundred times. It's exciting, <laughs> man. Like a dad at Home Depot. It. Yes. Yes. That's funny. So no, it was on my radar to go see him, and uh, man, I. I think it's a good product so we're gonna probably buy another one too but yeah i guess you could probably put two on a long mirror and uh 
Now, I don't know what's going to happen. If you break the mirror, I think it's going to hold most of it together, but I don't know if, if you're creating a, another disaster trying to hold on to it when you should let go, you know? You let it go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let it go for sure. Don't so, try and catch it. <laughs> but I'm just wondering if, if you break a mirror, you know, will it mostly stay intact and be safer? I don't know the answer to that. Hmm. I guess it depends on where it breaks. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You so, ever put you, you guys, no, uh, you ever put you guys require down? wrist guards on all mirrors or big mirrors or uh, what's your policies? You know what I used to do on big mirrors is I would take um, Gunther Bond and I would like draw like a grid on the back of the mirror and Gunther Bond. Mm. Um, and and so if a mirror broke, it stayed together. So, you know, safety backing is great, but then you have to cut holes in it yeah. for the mastic to adhere. But this is a way of just like, you know, I just take a tube and just draw, just go lines horizontally and then vertically like a grid and then let it, let it dry. And then I just got that little bit of peace of mind that if it did break, it, it hmm. wouldn't, it wouldn't so come apart, can, at least not right away. It'd give you a minute to get away from it. So you sure. leave that on the mirror and you, it, it, it can go right over your mastic and everything. Exactly. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, just really thin, like a sixteenth of an inch, you know. Um, so you know, you you lose that sixteenth of an inch, you know, against the wall, but usually that's not an issue. Huh. But that's a way to make your mirror safe, safer. Yeah, I mean, guys, we have a gym here that we replace the mirrors all the time. They're sixty by one twenties. Yeah, yeah, that's a good size mirror. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. really nice because the guys that put it up didn't use much mastic. Get it off the wall real, you know, with shingles, and they pop right off. And that's nice. And now they're getting smart. They they split them in half, make them sixty by sixty. So the next time some idiot breaks the mirror, they don't have to, you know, replace the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And they got them sixty by one hundred twenty standing up too. That's real fun. Mm -hmm. So you do those all the time. So, but I've never had trouble with handling mirror. Yeah, when I was in Vegas, we did, you know, a lot of mirrors in those, um, yeah. those casinos, man. They're just covered in them. And they yeah. would want to stack them on top of each other and do all kinds of, like, beveled, inlaid, you know. Money's no object. Yeah. Yeah. All different colors, peach, gray, whatever. So we did miles. For and miles. a little more context. Yeah, for a little more context on the mirrors that sh this same designer is asking for, it's a two-story <laughs> mirror wall over a fireplace. So it would be two pieces that are 72 by 120, um, one on top of the other. And oh, she doesn't oh. want any channel. She doesn't want anything. And I'm just sitting here like, I don't want to do this. Um, and the I've been trying to... Go ahead. And after a certain size, the glass is not mirror quality. You know, it's just right. right. Good point. Yeah, it's like good point. It becomes kind of like a funhouse mirror at some point. Yeah, because mirror in China used to mm -hmm. come off of a when they made mirror in China, it came off a float line. That's all they did was mirror. You know, but after a certain size, they just use regular glass, and any perfection in the glass shows up seven times and stuck with it yeah i tried what that. are your limits tim you talking to tim anybody what's that just wants yeah, to know tim. what your limits are stacking yeah. mirrors on a fireplace that big no i wouldn't i wouldn't stack that that would be my limit <laughs> no but i've done you know i've done a whole bathroom full of mirrors and look great I tried it. to give Tim a mirror job down in Carmel. Now I, those were, 
I mean, getting them in the house. They were was, pretty big, weren't they? That they was a like, pain in the well, neck. And 60 by 120 or something. Yeah. The street you couldn't park on. And, yeah. It's kind and of I got best crazy. I got, I got better things to do. Yeah. Like a nice. I feel book. like, <laughs> I feel like your limits are based on your past experience. Cause a 60 by 120 going into a, like Christina saying on a fireplace and back and all, you know, that's going to raise a red flag in your gut to a professional. Yeah. 60 by 120 in a dance studio. No big deal. You're rolling it through the front door. You're slapping it on the wall. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think your limits to answer your question are just going to be based on your previous experience and what your gut is telling you. I, I don't like, we don't, I, I, we don't really do many mirrors anymore, but like we never, I never really limited it by size. It was limited by, does does this seem like a good idea or not? It was more of just professional experience. And you can can you get in the house? Can you get in the bathroom? You know, that's up, up the, the stairs. Upstairs. <laughs> yeah, up the stairs. <laughs> Jay yeah. and I do that because we do all the measuring, but having been an installer, we know what our capacity is with our current install team. And I know if they have anxiety going in with that mirror, it's going to be a problem. Now, whether they should have anxiety or not is not the point. I know what their capacity is and what they feel comfortable with. And we kind of do it on a per basis, second floor, first floor, above yeah. the fireplace, like they said, dance studio. You know, you need more context. Yeah, around here, we only have second and third, up to three, store, three floors. We don't have high rises, so. That's really true. Lucky, yeah. <laughs> Elevators, like we you know, in Atlanta, you, you got so many different restrictions. Oh yeah. And then there's a hole in it with an elevator on an angle. That's why I like those poles. We're I think I'm gonna look into that. I'm gonna get some of those. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see the link in the chat? Oh, cool. No, I yeah, didn't. Christina put a link in the chat so you can go check them out. Oh, I see. Thanks, that. Christina. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. I'm sorry about that. Shower door professionals right there. That's what I'm talking about. Dropping the info. Well, thank you all so much for the help. The advice and the help and the experience. I am a naive little girl and I really have no idea what I'm doing half the time. And I feel like such an idiot with this designer. And I really appreciate all of the insight tonight. Thank you for letting me monopolize. Yes, well, let me tell you something, little girl. There's a lot of guys I wish knew as much as you do <laughs> about the glass. Well, you way said, more than you think you do. Yeah, you man. said she was, how, how old is the, compared to you, how old is the designer? How long has she been doing it? She, not long enough. She's, uh, so, seven so what I'm years getting at is, me. It's, she'll so come back. To that is she doesn't know. <laughs> Maybe she doesn't know, like, to give her the benefit of the doubt, maybe she doesn't realize that she's trying to manip manipulate you. Maybe she's just trying to get what she wants without, maybe there's that negative, is that, you know what I mean? Maybe it's just two new people talking to each other, you know what I mean? So you can give her the benefit of the doubt and just, like Keith was saying, sit down, explain your side, and hopefully kind of move forward from there. It's not... You know, we're making out to be like she's trying to be manipulative. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe she doesn't have the experience yet either. So it's always mm. give her the benefit of the doubt, sit down, talk about it, and hopefully come out on the same page. She doesn't know what she doesn't know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Great point. Yeah, that's Great fair. Point. Schooler. She needs a schooling. Yeah. Plus, Christina, there's no man on this call that would be able to put their ego aside as quickly as you did to at least ask for advice. So I'd say you're one of the smartest people on the call. So I would <laughs> never have the cojones to do that. <laughs> yeah. That makes you the smart one. Yep, there you go. It takes all of us. Thanks, yeah. Keith. Appreciate it. You say oh, pride, pride goeth before the fall. Ooh, well played, well played. All right, everyone. Well, it's six thirty. We're all out of nine thirty. Fuck. Oh, well, yeah, six thirty yeah, here. Nine thirty. Oh, you get know. Off. Yeah. It's it's bedtime where you are. <laughs> yeah. It's dinner time here. It's bedtime for you. Hey, thanks for joining us. It's always a pleasure to see y'all. I look forward to this every week. So let's do it again next week.